Hello. In this video I'm going to tell you a little bit about sharpening carving knives. Like over here this is my uh, basic carving knife. It's a... Uh... Oh, uh, here we go. It's a uh, Eric Frost Mora Sweden. And it... Uh, I'm going to tell you about how I, sharp I sharpen these. And primarily why I don't use water stones. Um, so first of all, the first thing that you need to do, which is the perfect way to do it, is to go to a grinding stone, like a Tormek or like any grinding stone that you've got, and you sharpen it on the grinding stone and create a concave surface on the edge and also on the other side. Symmetrical, right? And uh, if you cannot do that, it doesn't matter, it's just, it's just a very convenient way to man maintain your edges. Um, yeah, and once you have done that, you need to go to a perfectly flat uh, sharpening stone. And uh, either you have a perfectly flat uh, water stone, which requires that you have a diamond stone like this one to flatten it with. All right. But you don't need water stones, that's the, that's the point. And you also don't need a big diamond stone really, you just need a small one like this. This is diamond as well. And all you need to do, if you look at this edge now, it has uh, two small... Uh, I hope that you could see it. Two small ridges here which are connected and then there's a hollow, hollow uh, between those two, right? that's created with the diamond stone. So on the other side, I haven't touched this yet. This is coming directly from the uh, grinding stone. So this is now a concave and now I will put it against the diamond stone and create a flat surface, right? So let me just uh, do that quickly. All right. And now we'll look the camera it's not perfectly grounded but uh, you can probably see from the shadows here three lines that's uh, that's the flat grind now goes from the tip here then there's also a spot here and also down here I don't know why this is over here but it, it's better if it is like this All right that's when you know that your first hollow grind is good. All right, once you have done that, there's very little material to remove when you go to the next stage. This is just to establish the, the bevel to make them flat, All right? And then uh, I'm just going to tell you quickly, if you have diamond stones like this, this is what uh, Paul Sellers uh, on YouTube is talking about and he uses diamond stones like this and he uses uh, glass cleaner for for cleaning up uh, cars or like car windows like this is a car right yeah and the reason why he is using this is because it doesn't rust so if you were to use water on this and then accidentally don't wipe it off then you're going to get rust on your stone and it may look like this okay that's rust and this side is not, I can, can't use it for anything, okay. So that's not good. So you use the auto cleaner to uh, use it as an, a, uh, I mean, as a fluid on the surface, okay. And then if you want to clean it up, you use a normal rubber and you just rub it on the surface, on the big stone or on the small uh, diamond stone like this. Okay, and that takes away all the grit and uh, makes it possible to continue using the stone or abrasive. Then when you have done that, you do not need to use any kind of Japanese super awesome water stones. What you need to do is to get yourself a oil, oil stone. That's the optimal way to do it. You can use water stone, but these are better. And this is a very cheap standard oil stone. It has a coarse side, which is probably about 150 grit. I don't know really. Um, and then it 
has a fine side. It's probably about 400 grit. I got this one from my grandfather, so I don't know uh, the grit size, but this is a coarse sharpening stone. All right, and the reason why oil stones are better than water stones is because oil, oil stones are really hard. They will never wear down the same way that a, a water stone will do. A water stone will create a slurry on top, which is interfering with sharpening. All right. An oil stone will not do that, but it will get clogged, uh, like all the metal will wear down and get into the tiny pores of the stone, and you have to take that away sometimes. And then you use this uh, like kind of more coarse uh, stone to get that away, and sometimes you need to flatten it on either another oil stone or on some kind of sandpaper abrasive, right? And so it doesn't ever wear down anything, and that is why they are perfect for sharpening uh, scandi grinds. So if you go with a flat scandi grind like this, and you don't want to convex this one and get it rounded, because then you can't really carve with it perfectly well. So then you can use an oil stone because they are always flat. Right, and you do that after you've done the diamond stone to create the flat surface on, yeah, on the bevel. And I recommend that after you have done your diamond stone, you go directly to to a really really fine stone. Um, so this diamond stone that I use, it's a thousand grit. And if you don't have a thousand grit, then you should use something like this one. It's probably 600 grit on the finer side. You use that, and then you jump immediately to a super fine stone. And this right here, this one, is a Ar Arkansas stone. And it's a, it's a translucent stone. Uh, actually, light will shine through it. And it's a super fine 4000 grit stone approximately and it's an oil stone it will never wear down and just use oil on it and actually when these are when these are clean and you haven't uh, clogged them up with uh, metal then they are actually faster than water stones actually they are that might seem counterintuitive but that's actually the case um, I can tell you more about that and why that is but they're actually faster but you have to clean them up and that's really what takes the time so here you can see the black stuff here forming on the stone right and that is going to get like razor sharp quite quickly because the surface is so small you don't have the entire bevel but you only have these two edges on the bevel, kind of, uh, from the uh, from the hollow grind. That means that it's you don't need much to sharpen a knife. You only need a little bit of time, and that means that you can jump immediately to a super fine stone like this one. You don't need more than four thousand grit approximately to be able to get a razor sharp knife. Um, I would normally jump to eight thousand grit. I got another oil stone here for that. 8000 grit and yeah this is the method and the reason why oil stones are better than water stones is because they always stay flat you don't ever need to flatten them except after you have done a lot of cleaning up with uh, another stone like this to get away the slurry and they're just very convenient you don't need to soak them in water all the time um, you don't need water, you can have them on the table like this and just use some light machine oil That's, this is for a, a sewing machine yeah, it's a light, light machine oil, you just put it on the stone to lubricate the stone, don't need to soak it in water and I go to sharpening whenever I need to do that just like that and then I wipe off the metal that's when you get the black stuff on the towel like that, and then it's done. That's why oil stones are so good for carving knives that needs to be perfectly flat. Right. 
oil stones and diamond stones. If you don't have a grinder that can create a concave, then you don't need it. You, it's just that the, the stage where you go to the diamond stone, in, in that stage you either need to you spend more time on it so that you get to a flat grind or you go to a coarser grit but then it's very important like I have a diamond stone here which is a 300 grit but I cannot use it because it's filled with rust so it's very important that the stone that you use that is a core stone is really really flat like the alternative for me when I'm not having a grinding stone to create a concave is to use the oil stone with the core side here all right, but this side needs to be perfectly flat because if it isn't flat then when you're sharpening on this then you're going to create a tiny little convex convexity on the, uh, the edge that means that when you jump to a finer grit like this and it's more flat than this side that means that you're not going to sharpen on the edge with this right so it's not going to give any effect you're not going to sharpen the knife so the core side needs to be perfectly flat and that's why it's way better to go to a grinding stone if you have one. And if you don't, make sure that your stones are flat. Use diamond stones to be sure. If you use oil stones, then you just need to, uh, to use the flattening stones to, um, to make them flat. Right, perfectly flat. Can never be any kind of discrepancy. Like this stone here is not flat. I would not use this stone. And I can see that because it's darker here in the middle. All right. And I'm not using this. I'm only using the fine side here. I'm using the diamond stone and I'm using the Arkansas stone and this one. All right. That's what I use. So <laughs> I realized that probably that's a whole lot of information to take in. And another thing. When it comes to stropping a knife, you do not sit down with your leather strop and do that like a hundred times. That is not the way to do it because that will convex the edge also. All right, that's really bad to do. Some people will really sharpen their knives only with the strop and that is not the way to do it. You will create a convex and you cannot make spoons with a convex knife. You need it to be flat so that you have control over where your knife is cutting when you're making the cut and when you're making straight lines and curves you need to know how quickly it turns inside the curve depending on the flatness of your knife if it isn't perfectly flat then it will turn more quickly and you will not have any control and you cannot curve flat you cannot carve a flat surface because the knife will not uh, reference against the flatness of the bevel okay <laughs> yeah, and just to show you that I pretty much know what I'm talking about, this is my copy of a Fritjof spoon. It's actually too thin, but it's uh, yeah, pretty good spoon. Here is a little fig spoon that I carved today. I don't really want to grab them because I'm dirty, but fig spoon, barn carver style. Here's another one that I carved at Spoonfest 2017. Right. So I'm not trying to show off, I'm just trying to show you that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to sharpening. Trying to give you some kind of proof. All right. So what to take away from this video? Use diamond stones to establish the bevel. Don't use the straps all the time because that is not really sharpening and use oil stones rather than water stones. They're much more convenient and they stay flat, right? That's it, thank you.